Hello and welcome to Nebula Talks. Before we begin, we have a few updates and reminders for you. We would love to have you be part of our Nebula community. And you can do so by logging on to www.nebula.com where you can join communities related to your area of interest, register for upcoming Nebula Talks, book one-to-one skylifts, and view other upcoming events. You can also take this opportunity to connect with fellow learners or the speaker by sending a connection request. When you connect with the speaker, you will be able to contact them directly as well as receive updates about their upcoming talks. Kindly note that during this session, you will not be able to switch on your camera or unmute your mic. To ask questions during the talk, go to the audience chat, type your question, and select post your question. If your question has not been answered during the talk, you will be notified once it's been answered. Or, if your question has not been answered during the talk, you can go to www.nebula.com and spin a quest, and your questions will be answered. Thank you for joining us today. We hope this talk broadens your horizons and takes you to new learning heights. So even before, like uh, during my 12th standard itself, like uh, I know I love computer and I want to pursue a career in computer science, but I was not good at anything. Like I don't know any coding or I have no idea about any such stuff, but I was pretty sure like I want to be in tech and mm -hmm. I want to develop some products. And that's why I chose the BTEC in computer science. And uh, when I did my bachelor's, I took a one year to just figure out like, what's my passion or which direction should I move and everything like that. And once I explored that, uh, like I was pretty sure like, okay, this is the kind of job I need. Uh, I need to be in a product-based company. I want to develop certain products that help some users. So like from pretty that day onwards, I started working towards that goal. Okay. Um, so you, you've been through your own experiences in terms of getting hands-on knowledge and experience. Uh, maybe let's talk about your days of internship. How did you go about applying for that internship and what were you thinking at that point of time? Yeah, for the internship, I really have to thank to my uh, university, LPU, because uh, they were the one who got me an opportunity there. Mm -hmm. And it was really surprising for me because uh, it was the perfect company for me to start my career because uh, they were working with uh, advanced search and recommendations, machine learning and NLP, such stuff. And that's my core passion. That's all I wanted to do, like, in whole my career. So that was the perfect uh, match for me. And for the interview, I did uh, prepared, like, for a month for that interview. I got the internship. And from there, I learned a lot about machine learning, how how the work and how the studies are different. Like I got experienced that on first hand and that opened up my mind, actually. Uh, so uh, maybe let's let's talk about like, you know, the kind of work that you were doing your internship and how was it since you mentioned that it's different from your work at the college or the classes that you attend. So uh, can you like maybe compare those two? Yeah, so, uh, so first thing is the life is entirely different than what you can imagine as a work because in a product-based companies, uh, the work culture is pretty much relaxed. You don't have to be in your formals. You don't have to come at nine o'clock and leave at five or nothing like that. It's pretty cool and chill life. Like you can come at any time. You, have, you just need to do your work and you, you can like have a good bonding with all your colleagues and most all of your colleagues will be like pretty genius and you can learn a lot from them. And from them, I learned like nobody's going to like teach you something. It's all about exploring, all about like using your ideas and implementing it and how to scaling up all the products. It's not just theoretical thing. You have to scale all the codes or stuff you're building it up. So learning that and it's a big learning curve. And once you know like how to do that learning part, uh, it will really help you to like crack anything in your uh, path. Right. Uh, so I understand at one point of time, you were thinking about pursuing your master's and higher studies. Yeah. And yeah. then it didn't happen. Let's talk about that story. Yeah, so, uh, so my plan was basically to work in an abroad country by the year 2022. Mm -hmm. And 
I want to pursue masters in 2020 so that two years I will do the my masters and after that I will get a job in 2020. So, so that was my plan. And I started applying in 2019. I did my uh, eyelids and uh, GRE, everything. I was applying to Canada, Germany, and all. And um, after that, at particular time, we got that COVID-19 situation, and uh, they uh, changed everything to online classes and stuff. But for me, the point of pursuing masters was to go into the country, explore the culture, uh, make new connections, and have that experience. And I believe it will not happen while we do online. So I dropped the plan of uh, masters. And from there onwards, I started to prepare myself, like how can I get directly from here to abroad without any masters? So that's how I went for that. OK. Um, so Germany is not one of the countries most of the software engineers think about it, think about pursuing a job overseas, right? So yeah. how did it happen that you turned your uh, gaze towards Germany and uh, happened to uh, go on board with your current employer who's also based here? So how did that happen? So uh, it's an interesting story because uh, for me, it, the goal was to go abroad in some European countries. So I was targeting mostly UK, Germany, uh, Netherlands. And I was preparing for all the uh, big companies for that. And uh, I was lucky enough to get offers from multiple countries. But I choose Germany because, uh, first of all, Germany has a very good uh, socioeconomic culture and work culture is pretty good. Like, you don't want to get exhausted by working here, especially it's a new place, new culture. You don't want to be stuck in, like, some rat race. So here, I feel like it's uh, awesome to have a job and it's good enough, like payment is good enough, uh, your colleagues are amazing, and the country itself is really pretty good. So I thought it's a good option, and it's easy to settle in in future also. All right. So one of the things that uh, I'm sure that you must be experiencing, and since you mentioned, like, you know, the culture of uh, social welfare, right, and the yeah. culture of having a right balance. So in those terms, what's the difference that you have felt, like, you know, because you had a little bit of exposure of work in India as well, and then you are working now here. So what's what's the fundamental difference that you feel is there? Yeah, so the fundamental difference is in India, we usually prefer like, uh, because we are brought up in a way that we give high preference to our, either for our education or our for our career and stuff. So whenever work comes up, we just, we just sacrifice most of our time and we do the work, even though it's not... Uh, asked by anyone but we just have that tendency to work more uh, perform more than what is expected and stuff like that but when i came here uh, it's not even an expectation nobody expects you to work more than certain hours nobody expects you to do like a super hard job and stuff everyone expects to you have a good life first then your career later so uh, I believe like as we grow uh, and we get more older, like uh, having a good work-life balance is really important. And yeah. that's something like it's guaranteed here. <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. In the end, you can't really fault the Germans in working hard and playing hard. So yeah. I think that they get it pretty right over here. Yes. So uh, one of the things being that you prepared for your interviews, maybe you can shed some light on that, that how did you first of all go about selecting the companies? Because you mentioned that even there you took your time to identify the right fit employers and then preparing for the interview. So maybe you can walk us and the audiences through the process. Yeah. So uh, that's something I learned from my uh, BTEC times because when we do BTEC or when while we are in college, all we think about is uh, we need to get some job or we need to get some X amount of packages and stuff like that. But uh, what I learned is uh, we should actually work on something that we really love about. Otherwise, at some point, you will get bored of that or you will hate it and uh, it will be a very difficult situation later on. So for me, like uh, my passion is with machine learning and uh, NLPs, all those kind of language models and stuff. And I always prefer to work with a team who does that. Mm -hmm. So that's why like when I uh, when I apply to certain companies, I make sure like they have this particular team, they have particular requirements of my skill set. Then mm -hmm. only I will apply it to them, even though the company might be like, really good or really uh, amazing to go, but they don't have certain uh, team that I wanted, I will not apply to that. 
So right. even in my BTEC, like a wild placements were going on. Like uh, I didn't apply to certain big companies because they don't have certain uh, need for me. So I didn't apply for that. So that's the same uh, methodology I used here. So I applied for all the companies. They have this skill. And while I, I was interviewing, I got the offers. I really did research like where I can have a good career growth. Uh, how are the colleagues there? If uh, yeah, we need to have a good uh, learning curve also there, like we need to have a good collaboration and stuff. Right. So overall, like I felt like uh, my current company is the best to grow because everyone is like in a learning phase. Everyone is always learning, always mm -hmm. researching. And that's something I can also learn from them. Yeah, that's right. Right. So uh, in terms of you mentioned that teams which have a requirement for a certain specific role. So how did you research that? How did you identify? Did you take up certain interviews just to like, you know, see that that if you are yet there at the level of preparation? Yeah, obviously. So I started my preparation uh, around uh, 2021, uh, uh, starting like January, February. Mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, I know like I, I haven't studied anything for like past four years after my graduation. So I know like it will take some time to like, get to the studies environment while working full time. So uh, it took me like a couple of months to just to get started. And while getting started, I made a good curriculum for myself, uh, like what to study, which part to focus and everything. So while studying, what I do is like I apply for some companies in India, mostly in uh, India, where they will call me for interview. I'll just attend it because I just want to know like if I'm ready to give an actual interview for the companies I'm targeting for. So it's a give and take where you can learn, like sometimes even if we learn a lot, but during the interviews, you will go like, you will be completely blank, even though you know answers. So just to avoid those fears and stuff, I gave a lot of mock interviews, some real interviews. I was just preparing myself. And after a certain point when I'm confident in, enough, like uh, I scheduled with the companies which I'm targeting for. And I was lucky like, enough to crack them. <laughs> So um, you would have targeted companies from different countries, right? Um, yes. Different uh, locations, work locations as well. Um, so if if you can like maybe talk about which companies, which countries, and like you know what was the surprises that were there, or the things that you know you felt like uh, was sharing with the audience. Yeah. So um, so uh, like obviously like I had like couple of like high targeted companies and some safe companies like I wanted to apply. So I applied in UK uh, for multiple companies and one of them is Facebook. Mm -hmm. In Amsterdam, I applied for Booking.com and some other several other companies. In mm -hmm. Germany, also a couple of startups mm -hmm. and a couple of like e-commerce websites and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Austria also I have applied, in Canada also. Mm -hmm. And so most of the uh, countries which which is ready to provide visa i got uh, like in review calls i got calls from facebook uh, i got in review call from microsoft google mm -hmm. even amazon also and mm -hmm. i have cracked i got offers from amazon and facebook mm -hmm. uh, which was surprising and the most surprising one was the zoom offer like, because i didn't apply for zoom okay. and they contacted me through uh, uh, like linkedin and uh, they they con reached me so that's one surprising way. So that's something I found out, like if your profile is good enough, uh, the higher uh, recruiters will come to you at right. certain point. So I got like multiple recruiters who came to me without even applying. Yeah. And because of this, all interviews going together and my preparation was at the right time. So I was is like, it was not much of a pressure for me to attend all these interviews and it was good like to like know a good balance of those. Okay. okay. So in terms of your, uh, once you got an offer from Zoom, uh, and there would be some part which is to do with administrative processes, visa, then other requirements as such, um, how much of uh, overhead was that? Uh, to be frank, it was really easy for me because uh, Zoom has provided me a visa consultation. They were providing me everything. So. I just need to send them my documents. Apart from that, nothing, because they have provided me all the uh, steps and all the necessary law, law and stuff like visa stuff and everything. So I just need to follow their procedures. That's it. And it was not a headache because I got my visa and everything within like one month or within 40 days, I would say. Uh, it was quite easy. 
Okay. So as part of the visa process and protocols, uh, was somebody assisting you in India or not? Uh, uh, so uh, for me, like uh, the team was located in Germany and they told me like what to do in India and how to apply, like book your slots and when you have to go for that a visa interview and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I just followed their steps and I just got into like, it was very cute for me. Okay. So uh, again, one of the like great things of like, you know, being in Germany and many other European nations is this, that the visa process is relatively simple compared to other places. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, there are not many ifs and buts. Um, another thing that uh, I would like to talk to you about is the part which is to do with uh, the interview process. How many rounds and like uh, what all is like, you know, sort of uh, covered in those rounds and how, how does one go about preparing for this? So basically, most of the product companies, they will have around four, four technical rounds and one behavioral round. So mm -hmm. this is is standard for most of the companies there could be plus or minus one round like there could be three or five maybe but usually it is four technical round and one behavioral round mm -hmm. so uh so in the technical round what happens is uh, since i already have three to four years of experience three of them were coding rounds and one was system design round so mm -hmm. It was like system design. I have to prepare myself. They will ask like uh, how to build certain big products, like maybe design Instagram or how YouTube works and stuff like that. And you should have a deep knowledge of all the components and uh, how how your brain works. They are not looking for the right answer. They are looking for how you think and what's your way of thinking that. And other three coding rounds are pretty uh, same. They follow data structure and algorithms. You just have to solve questions they are asked. So it will be like either one hard question or two medium level question. And this is pretty standard for all the companies. And there'll be a behavioral question to analyze like if you will fit with the culture of the company and um, what is the way of your thinking about like in a managerial perspective or in a casual way and stuff like that. Yeah, even most of the people will think that's an easy round, but that's also something we have to take care of and prepare for it. Yeah, and yeah, that's more about it. Okay. So thanks for sharing that um, again, Yasser. Now, one of the things is most of the people perceive that once you've gotten the offer, you land here in Germany or in an overseas destination and that's it. <laughs> but uh, for, for uh, people like us who have been here, we understand that's the first milestone, right? <laughs> and then, then, then they start with the challenges, right? Yes. So what are the challenges that, that you're facing and the challenges that you would want to give heads up to all the people aspiring to work in international locations? Yeah. So uh, so like when coming to Germany, like uh, after landing here, first thing you will no notice is that not much people will speak English. So mm -hmm. you have to know some basic German, but it doesn't mean you have to learn a new language and come here, nothing like that. I just I just prefer to learn on the go. So when you need certain stuff, like do some Google Translate and learn that and use that. So it was a big barrier for me. Then finding an apartment to stay because of a lot of housing crisis and stuff. Finding an apartment is also difficult. Mm -hmm. And after all this stuff, the biggest thing is since you are here alone and you need to have a good community support here. Without a community support, without a good social circle, mm -hmm. it's always you will get so lonely at certain point of time. So yeah. it's important for you to get out, find new people, like you should do the, all the ice breaking stuff and like have a good circle of friends from different countries and different cultures that will also help you to learn a lot of new stuff. And yeah. I'm happy to do that because I got to learn a lot of new stuff from different people. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that, that we really loved about you is that how like you know open to like you know communicate and like build a community you are and that's what we are also all about at Nibula building communities and I understand and thank you for bringing that up because it's such an important thing um, another very good point that you brought in terms of accommodation right because it's such a big headache it, it feels like yeah in the end it's just an apartment right <laughs> but, one of the things being this, that for regulatory reasons, your apartment or the address is tied to everything. Your, uh, the local district uh, authority registration, that registration itself is then used by anything and everything that you go further, health insurance and such. So uh, thank you for bringing these points up. Right now, sure. what 
are your plans going ahead? Do you see yourself like, you know, going to become like start of a permanent resident here? Or like, are you, are you thinking about those things? I know language is one of the concerns, but uh, putting that aside, like what's your uh, vision for the future? Yeah, so my plan currently is to be, get a permanent resident here and language is a barrier but i wouldn't say it's a difficult barrier because once you put your mind into it like yeah. it's not that hard to crack it like right. getting basic knowledge is not that difficult i believe right. so yeah right. i'm looking forward to it especially as a software engineer it's easy for us to get a permanent resident here because yeah. we have a little bit more preference over others yeah uh, also i would like to share with the audience actually it's so uh, as a software engineer we are privileged and it's not that it's not true for others. So for others, just the barrier to entry becomes a little higher. So uh, you yourself are a blue card uh, applicant right now, and you'll soon have it. And blue card is for highly skilled individuals. Um, uh, software engineers qualify, scientists qualify, doctors as such qualify for the blue card programs. But even if you're not, it's not that you do not qualify. It's just that what your employer pays you needs to be a little more than like the rest of these uh, in-demand or understaffed professions. So again, that's that's a very good point that that you brought about. And overall, as you said, that life and social welfare system in Germany is very very high um, compared to places like United States. So maybe one of the things that we can talk about is if you have now that you are here and, and you applied for other countries, do you, uh, what do you feel about it? Do you feel like, you know, it's better and that like, you know, uh, like surprisingly you got lucky or something like that? So, uh, no, so like uh, previously I worked in Bangalore. So like, I know what a big city is and how crowded and how stuff everything is there. So like when I get offers from London or Amsterdam, I like I can imagine like how big or how crowded it could be. Yeah. So right now I'm in a city where everything is so peaceful. Like uh, it's really surprising how peaceful it is. And it's easy for me to travel to any other countries also. Like I could visit Paris or like I could go to Switzerland anywhere like within a few hours. So yeah. it's a privilege for me to live in a certain city where it's all accessible, but I'm not in the middle of any uh, yeah crowd or anything so yeah. it's kind of a perfect place yeah yeah and plus the famous uh, nine euro ticket that germany is offering right now <laughs> yeah we have that advantage of nine euro ticket for per month so you can travel anywhere just yeah. with nine euro yeah yeah it's unbelievable right like uh, there's certain things which uh, are uh, out of the world per se over here which otherwise nobody would believe if you tell them right mm -hmm. yeah so that's that's great, uh, Yasser. Um, apart from it, um, like with respect to since you said that if if you like you know talk about language, right? So German is definitely like you know it's one thing which will make your life uh, easier or a lot easier. But apart from it, would you say like for destinations like this, like having a certain level of proficiency in English is also necessary? Yeah, having English is always good because uh, let's say like all the new generation, they speak English and English is a way you can like talk to anyone in any country. So that's one thing you can say or you can be confident that it could be a common factor. Yeah, uh, Yeah. so having English is really good for you. It will be an asset. All right, all right. Um, coming to the part where in uh, your employer is concerned, right? So what benefits or perks do you see which like you know generally are offered here or the sort of like you know life which is offered here which is above or starkly different from what happens let's say in with employers in India so something that you can like you know yeah for that uh, I don't have an ex uh, like a good differentiating point because both the companies I worked like even in India or here both are product-based companies and all the product-based companies have this habit of giving you all the good perks. Yeah. And your life will be actually kind of uh, good and they will provide you all the stuffs you needed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm enjoying both the perks, like whatever I received in India or whatever I'm receiving here, it was there in both the places. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of good. But yeah. I believe that it only happens for product-based companies. But if you are into the service-based companies, it's an entirely different story in India and here. Yeah. 
So he is far better than compared to India. But yeah. I'm not an expert on that. So. Yeah, okay. Uh, so one of the things, like uh, irrespective of whether you are in products and services, which people talk about, is the thing around work boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. That once you are out of office, you are out of office here. Yeah. Yes. Like your managers or like your uh, um, peers and colleagues would not be pinging you, would not be calling you unless and until it's a case of emergency. And even then, so so has that also been your experience? Yeah. So here, like uh, I've seen like people who uh, like uh, everyone has their own time period of working. Like some people start working at 7 a.m. and they finish at 2 p.m. Some starts working at 10 or 11 o'clock and finishes at 5 or 6 p.m. But it's all about their pro, uh, personal preference. They just work and once they're done, they are done. Like nobody's going to like ping them or call them for anything unless unless it's really emergency. But uh, in India, it's usually like um, you will keep on working even though like, um, like you think like if you work a lot, people, like others will consider you as more hardworking or more some things like that. But here, if you do, if you overwork, people will think you like you're crazy or something like that. Not a hardworking guy. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a big thing. That's that's sort of true. Yeah. They, uh, also, it's it's a bit of a German thing that uh, uh, what they call the famous uh, uh, efficiency, the German efficiency that uh, if if you are working too long, then maybe you don't really know what what you're doing. So that's that's yeah. also sort of a perception, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think that's really a good point because you also need to get out of your work zone and you have to have a life outside of your work. That's right. It helps you. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yes, so that's that's actually quite good. Uh, now, coming to the part of like you spoke about community and the fact that you need to network and build bridges, right? Yes. So, uh, how can most of the newcomers do that, let's say from India and from other places who land here and start their life over here? So what sort of an advice can you like you know, give for those guys? Yeah, so uh, in my case, I started with uh, some communities in Instagram or Facebook. Mm -hmm. and I will just uh, join them and like, and there is something called meetups also. Like you, you can just uh, go and participate in all this stuff wherever people are meeting up, uh, if you see some fellow Indians or if you see any other people you are in, like you in just you can connect with them. Just go and talk to them, just break the ice because uh, at one point they are also looking for certain company, we are also looking for certain company. So just uh, break the ice, talk to them yeah. and then gradually you will build a network. It's not like in one day you can have everything, but it's mm -hmm. a gradual process. Like each day if you meet someone and it's a, way of building community. So like after reaching here, I got to meet a lot of people, especially a few people from my hometown, which I didn't expect to meet also. It was surprising, but now we have a good community here. Yeah, that's okay. it. Oh, that's great. Uh, in fact, uh, that's one of the things that most, uh, like because in India, community is by default, right? That, yes. that you don't really have to put an effort into like meeting people or having communities around you. Also, you are being born and brought up uh, there. So it's much easier. Here, this requires some effort and some commitment as well. As you said yourself, that you have can't happen in one day, right? You have to have those connections like, you know, uh, alive uh, on like somewhat of a regular basis. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Yasa, thanks for sharing all this. Now, moving to our segment of audience questions, which is, uh, again, you, you have you have a fan following for sure. Yeah. So, so ever since we've done the talk, like we've seen like the numbers climb up to 500 and 600 people interested in your talk. And LPU campus already has your photographs all over the campus. So, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, again, and uh, the thing being this, that uh, uh, this like brings us to the part that where a lot of people would like you to uh, provide some of the answers to the things that they're thinking. So one of our audience uh, wants to know is what role does coding, programming and core engineering skills and internships, uh, I'm guessing that he or she meant internships in these specific areas, play with respect to getting a job in Germany or other European countries? 
yeah so uh yeah so coding is something it's a core skill you need to have as a software engineer like you need to be able to solve problems mm-hmm. so for that you need to know coding but it's not limited to any programming language or anything it's all up, up to you like which language you like you just be good at that particular skill mm-hmm. you should know good uh, data structures and algorithms and how to solve the problem so this is the most important stuff like if you apply to any companies mm-hmm. if if you are as a fresher or if you are experienced or if you have 10 years of experience anything you need this coding and data structure and algorithm skills so mm-hmm. this uh, this is the first interview rounds you will always have like all the technical rounds are about coding and stuff so right. it's really important to know that okay um besides that uh, since work experience is brought up and internships are brought up uh, now uh, generally speaking uh, in india and like even since we are actively engaged in employing software engineers in the company itself we see a lot of students uh, uh, applying for internships or for apprenticeship and full time opportunities but what we also have felt that people fall short especially when it comes to application right so they they may understand core concepts but the application part is missing so what can you advise on that front that people can do to improve this yeah so uh, this is something even i also faced during my second and third year so first thing like you all have to think about is like it's not just you are applying it's like let's say thousands of applications are going to a certain company right how can you stand out of that crowd like how can you be unique in that thousands of applications so what i think is like if you have a lot of core skills if you're good at anything but there'll be like other hundreds of candidates who are also good at that so for me at that as a student what you can do is have a good projects have good projects where uh, you can demonstrate okay you have did a particular stuff let's say for example you are in you are applying for a machine learning uh, internship or something like that mm-hmm. you have to have couple of two to three projects where you demonstrate like how much effort you have given to implementing machine learning in that project so that uh, the recruiters can easily like you will be very unique to them because you just don't write skills as machine learning you have some proof of concept to say like you know it very well so similarly for anything if you want to be a front end designer so some uh, show some projects which has good designing projects and stuff like that if you want to be a back end have another project which is related to that so you should apply your skill in a very good project and those projects should be unique it should not be something you see from youtube or google and just copy paste it it should not be that it should be something unique to you so that you can really explain that because i remember a cu- certain couple of my interviews uh, this is during my uh, mm-hmm. btech time so it's a one hour interview where they are supposed to ask you coding question but because of my project the whole one hour was discussing about my project only okay. and since it was done by me i was very comfortable about that i can like talk about it for hours and days and months so yeah. they really liked it so they offered me so it's it's a very big advantage if you have a good projects okay so yeah that's that's one of the things that we also actively do that instead of talking about generic algorithms or data structure problems and things like that we specifically talk about the work people have done and which is a very good indicator of that you've actually done it yourself and you applied yourself so yeah that's that's a great advice another question that there is is what extra skills did you acquire to get a job in germany besides like you know the core engineering and technical skills <laughs> uh yeah so uh i didn't like uh, did anything special just for this particular part but what i have to say is like all my previous experience it's a skill growing stuff like all my past experience helped me to grow more skills mm-hmm. and i used that skills in a good way in my resume in my interviews to tell them a good story like how much how good i am at this particular stuff so that's the way of showcasing your skill uh, because i am an experienced software engineer that's why but if you are a fresher the best way is to like showcase in a project and stuff so that you can tell a story about that so that's how i build the stuff and one thing is like if you're applying for certain or new roles or something like that you have in experience so try to learn some new stuff about that and do some project so that you can explain that skill set also yeah uh, so from this um, uh, i'm sorry i i have a bit of a follow up question right so uh, the thing uh, we have also seen is this 
good candidates, good technical skills, but cannot explain, cannot uh, put their thoughts together, cannot like uh, put the thoughts in the universal language, which is English. Yeah. So how much of that is needed and what can uh, candidates do to practice? Yeah, that is also a very important part of an interview because uh, like like you said, even I also know friends who are like super genius, who knows data structure and algorithm like, like a water to them, but they are not able to explain it in the interview and they just don't get the opportunity. So I have seen such thing. So what I do for that is, so while I'm preparing for interviews, while I'm studying, I, I will always write whatever I'm studying in a notebook. So in a notebook, while I write, I will just talk to myself. Okay, this is the way to think for this because of uh, all these data structures going here, that. So I just talk to myself and I do that. I try to record my video, like explaining that to someone else. And uh, it's kind of uh, awkward at the first, like when you like record yourself telling yeah. all the stuff and all. But at some point you will get used to it. Like you can even have a YouTube vlogging. Just you, you just vlog whatever you're studying. It will also help you because in interview, they are not looking for like how good you can code or like each line by line, nothing. It's the 80% of stuff happens like how you explain it, mm -hmm. what is your thinking process. So you need a really good communication to that. Without practice, it will never come. So mm -hmm. you have to practice is like 10, 15 times before an interview and then it will be good for you. Yeah. Right. So that makes it perfect. Yeah. Right. Right. And it also is demonstrative of that you can collaborate with other team members, right? So, yeah. Yeah. You know, which is like most of the part of your job, right? You can't work in a silo. Yeah. Okay. Another one is this that um, how easy is it to get a remote job in Germany for freshers? Now, I don't know like whether like, you know, how much of uh, an understanding or expertise you would have, but Maybe we can talk about also that, like, um, did you try or th think about remote jobs before, like, you know, applying for this? And what's your experience? Uh, yeah, so uh, I think uh, getting remote job is not that difficult, but you should know, like, where to apply and what to expect. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect to uh, get a remote job from a very high companies like MNCs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mostly, as for my information, like, I know startups are hiring Indians mm -hmm. for the remote job. Because mm -hmm. I have a friend who has who is a co-founder of a startup. Mm -hmm. uh, he's hiring software engineers from India mostly mm -hmm. as a remote job. So most of the startups do that. Mm -hmm. So you could apply to startups and in different like I know from Austria and Germany, there are a lot of startups hiring for remote mm -hmm. jobs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, again, they all need to show, like need to see your skill set and stuff like that. So yeah, you could apply in that way. Okay. And how much of an upside or a downside would you say is there for a pressure to go for a remote job? Like, what do you see as a pro and a con for a fresher, especially that since uh, the yeah. audience mentioned freshers? Yeah. First, first of all, I would not recommend anyone to do remote job, even yeah. though it sounds convenient, it sounds cool, it sounds everything, but you will miss a major part of work culture experience. You will miss a major part of collaborating with your team. Uh, the online work is never equal to your face-to-face uh, -face interactions or like your actual experience and communicating. Uh, so that's the important. As a fresher, it's very important for you to gain a lot of knowledge in first first one or two years. So you will know what's the world out there, how are the people, how are the teams with you, what are the fun activities you can have, and all the talks you can have in your office. So that's a certain experience you can't get anywhere. Because during lockdown time, I really missed my office. Yeah. Like I wish I was still in my office because it was such a good time to be in office. Yeah. Yeah. So I really miss that part. So that's why I'm saying like it's always better to start at uh, in an actual work environment rather than remote. Yeah. Well, I'm 100% in agreement with you on this one. I cannot agree more. Yeah. yeah. yeah because uh, what most of the people also don't understand is this that look an organization also provides you with insight into the business domain right which is just not possible if you're remote then yes. you just are a task master you finish your task and that's it yes yeah. Yeah, so thank you for highlighting that uh, popular question gets asked again and again what are the strategies to crack interviews i think it's a little generic but if you have any special tips or insights for the audience 
yeah so what uh, so for all the product based companies i believe this this will apply to most of the product based companies so what i do is i do lead code questions mostly mm-hmm. so uh, i solve around 10 uh, like i started with one or two questions per day and i will gradually like within 3 4 months i will go to like 10 questions per day mm-hmm. so i will solve as much as questions possible and while solving what i will do is i will write in a notebook all the questions Mm-hmm. how i solved it what was my thinking process even one small answer which is like three or four lines of code i will write like 10 pages of notes about that what right. i thought about it every stuff so i did this for like four to six months or maybe to 10 months and all so i will have a good bunk of knowledge with me so like whenever i see new question which is i never seen before like my brain will automatically recognize the pattern so it's all about practicing lead code and for system design, you need to like refer some YouTube channels and uh, some books. Uh, read a lot of technical books for system right. design, uh, which is not applicable for freshers. It's only for like experienced guys. But for coding, it's always good to go with a uh, lead code and gigs for gigs. Understand the concept. What's the logic? Also, the best part is like you should read others' answer also. It's not like your answer is correct or wrong, but others' answer might be way better. And you have to know like how they also thought about that answer. So it's a process. It will take a long time, but uh, do that continuously with like without skipping even a single day. After a particular time, you will get used to it, and that will help you to crack the interview. Okay. Uh, so in in terms of uh, uh, sort of uh, a question which you have already answered, but maybe you have like uh, something further to add that in terms of the work visa. Uh, once your employer has presented you with an offer, how much of that part is on you to do uh, for the process in India? And what is up to the employer to do? Like, who does it fall upon to do? Yeah. So for me, I have to do just uh, two stuff. One is like, I have to book an appointment with the embassy, like uh, for a particular visa interview date, mm-hmm. uh, which is done online. Mm-hmm. Next time. Like I have to go there and uh, attend the visa you know, application process and stuff. So I have to go that go to the embassy. So that's the only stuff I have to do. And all the documents I have to arrange will be provided to me. Like they will provide me the list of documents and they will also give me particular German doc, uh, document that is required, like uh, mm-hmm. employment contract and other uh, German related like uh, documents and stuff. So I have to just print it out and give it to the visa officer. So that's the whole task I have to do. Then just uh, once you get the visa, book your flight and just come. Okay, that's, that's uh, actually pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, so uh, another question, which is, um, how did you do the research uh, about the companies, like you know, that which is the better employer? Like, where did you start? Like. Are there specific portals or because there's so much out there? Yeah. So, uh, the, yeah. So for me, it was like mostly uh, I want to know uh, what is the, what would I say? Like what company have the roles uh, aligning with my skill set and stuff like that. Uh, so for example, like I know I want to apply to companies. They have machine learning teams. They have uh, NLP related teams and stuff. So I just Google them. I, I Google like stuff like, uh, how is the work culture there? What is the pay range? How is the life going on there? So is it a good in the long term? So stuffs like that. So you should have some 10 to 15 or 20 companies that you really target for. And I just applied for, for them in their websites and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah I think uh, that's a good approach. Um, okay, final question, uh, because otherwise the questions would keep on roll, rolling in. Uh, so final question, uh, how far along are you in terms of your German language? How easy or difficult was it to get started with a new language? <laughs> yeah, so I'm not at all proficient yet. So, but w- what I know is like, I need to know, uh, I know like how to go to grocery and buy stuff from there. That's an important part. How to right. like, uh, like how to get stuff that I needed. So I just know about that stuff only mostly, which is kind of a basic survival need. Yeah. yeah. And I'm trying to have a, like I'm I have a couple of German friends now, so I get uh, I hang out with them so that I will learn like how they are how are they talking to each other how can I give my input maybe if I'm speaking wrongly and all they will correct me so that's right. how I'm doing right now. Yeah. Right. All right, Yasir. 
Thank you so much for all the insights. We cannot be thankful enough to you. And we'll have also a small gesture of thanks from our side. Please uh, watch for it in your inbox. Soon enough, you'll uh, receive that from us. And uh, that's just a small gesture of appreciation. Also, uh, that there would be a lot more of your fans asking you a lot more questions on the platform. So whenever you get time, it'll be great if you can uh, answer those questions. Um, yeah. Hopefully, soon again, once you are forward down, talks down the line. Thank you so much, Yasser. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Yeah, it was pleasure to talk to you all also. And I hope like I was able to provide the answers that audience and you all are looking for. Yeah. And if you have any further questions, yeah, you can hit me up on the Nebula platform. I will be happy to answer the questions. Sure. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you again, Yasser. And have a good day and uh, a great rest of the journey here in Germany. Please take uh, care. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day all. Have a good day. Yeah. All right. Off with the scene. Bye. Bye.